Today we have one of those crazy days that I look forward to every year. It's the last warm day and it's supposed to really get cold starting tomorrow. Now because the Lego table is clear, I'm expecting the next day or so Luciano's going to come by with his cafe racer for some paint work. And we'll try to take care of that for him. But I just hope it doesn't get as cold as they're saying it's going to get. There's a temperature that it just gets hard to hold a spray gun. It's so cold out there. It doesn't mean you can't paint, but it just takes some of the fun away. So what I decided to do today, instead of fooling around, and usually I'm, I'm a little slow getting started in the morning, uh, I have one more part to buff. So today's project will be get this buffed out, and then that'll allow me to have all of these parts painted, and I can do the, the next part uh, if Luciano brings the cafe racer over, or I can start on the wheels, and I still have some work on the fairing. So as always, planning out the day, sequencing, starts off the day right. Now this is always one of the things beside my coffee I enjoy. We feed the birds here of course, and any, anybody who comes over here for coffee in the morning knows this is a great way to be entertained. And uh, these guys, I really enjoy feeding them every morning. Uh, birds, coffee, sandpaper. What a combination. So I'm glad I got all the battery charges flipped over because it is cold out here. Oh man, and it's supposed to get the next three or four days really get brutal. So I'm going to try to get as much done downstairs as I can. Should be able to finish off that buffing. But uh, my, my dream was I was going to try to get some of the parts assembled, but it may be more appropriate considering the weather to get started on painting the wheels too. So this is always my point. I've got to sequence up what I want to do today. Luciano said it's going to be a couple of days. I spoke to him this morning. He does want to bring the cafe racer down here and he's going to bring it up into white and he wants me to do the ladders and we're pretty good at doing that. I'll be honest with you. We're real good at it. Did about five of them already. Did two for him. One for me, three for me. I did, I did several of these in the past. But anyway, it's all beside the point. What's the real point? The point is it's cold out here. The warm coffee's inside. The birds are flapping. The buffing compound's ready to go. So what am I doing out here? And I really look forward to seeing how this little cafe racer that uh, Luciano's working on is going to come out because that's one of my thoughts for next year, maybe doing my RD up like a cafe racer, but I have a special plan for that. And I always start doing my planning a year or two ahead of time, sometimes three years. It's in my mind already what I'd like to do to this. And just, just to give a little idea, a GS1100 gas tank fits right on this. I have that little fairing that I bought for the FZR, and I can make a custom seat from scratch that's not a problem at all. So I am just wondering, you know, I'm, I'm already thinking far into the future. And I had this bike for quite a while because I had his evil twin here and we were track day in it. It was a track bike. I had the picture in my mind of how I wanted to do this restoration. And when it finally came time to do it, I had the concept sketches and everything. And I think this one really came out nice. So in my mind, I've sequenced up the three things I want to get done. I want to finish the buffing in the next couple days, start the wheels, and get started on Luciano's Cafe Racer when he brings it over here, probably before the end of the week. This is the buffing product that we're going to use, and we have had such good luck with this. If, if you only knew, and I'm going to go back a little bit, if, if you went back, like I go back, the 60s and 70s, we used to paint motorcycles with acrylic lacquer. And to buff it up and wet sand it, it was a nightmare because all you had at that point in time were electric drills with, with these wool buffing pads that would burn the paint and leave swirl marks. And anyway, and I was doing, at the time, doing about a motorcycle a month. I had a business back then. But the problem is, and it's not a problem for modern people. If you don't appreciate how hard it was to do that years ago, you would never appreciate 
how good this works. Now, we have our fairing part sanded with 2500 Merca. I'm going to put a new pad on the buffing machine and these modern orbital 12, I call them the $12 Harbor Freight buffers, they do such a good job. It's a shame not to buff the paint out. It really is. And this is, this is the, the Meguiar's is real good. And I found this to be real good. Then there's probably a hundred other ones that are good. You know what it's like? A good example. It's like coffee. Starbucks coffee is good. My wife's coffee is good. Even when I make coffee, it's good. Well, but I think this is just a little bit better. And I think if anybody's serious about wanting to buff out their uh, high-end car or their motorcycle, this was, I think, about 40 bucks. I'm not sure. I have to look at the receipt. But but it's a lot of material. I mean, what, this this will last me a year or so. I think this is worth trying even if you use this by hand, I noticed inside the scoops and everything on the previous parts, this stuff worked great by hand, by buffer. And the only thing I would suggest, don't bother with it, those things that go on an electric drill. When you're turning, it always leaves some kind of swirl marks. That's it. But right there, that's one good product. Now, I personally, personally found it pretty interesting out on YouTube. This, this actually I thought was funny. They were comparing high-end buffers and there are buffers that are, I don't even want to say how much they are, a lot of money. You could buy a motorcycle for what they cost. They're professional, they're pro professional people that use them all day long, and, and they're getting paid. Well, our, we're exactly the opposite. I'm not getting paid, and I, I don't want to invest money in this one. I could be buying something. I could be buying Legos for my grandson. So, again, here's a, here's a pad we use to do a flitz test. I'll leave this with the flitz. That's uh, because I'm not going to do the flits right now. If I want to buff out some aluminum parts or something that's not really critical. But on paint, this is what I found is really, I think, an excellent tip. Now, the, the buffers, the Harbor Freight buffers, this is the latest one from the latest batch. I bought two of them. They have a different pad. It's, it's a softer. There's three layers of the pad. And that's really nice because you can see after I buffed a while, it kind of radiuses that off. That allows you to get in corners and edges and angles and whatever. But but keep in mind, this thing is only going back and forth. It's not going around in a circle. So it really doesn't have that issue that you have with an electric drill of leaving swirl marks or big buffers and polishers. And uh, I have one of those big buffers. And there's uses for it, especially if I'm doing my minivan once a year or something. But for, for motorcycles, for small parts, or doing a guitar, something small. I don't think you can beat this. And this one, I, they just it just seems like that, that, what, that pad, after a very short amount of time, gets a nice radius in it. And we're ready to buff. Now, before I buff any part, I always like to do my own little test. And first of all, for me, the test is always, it's pretty simple. If it's sandpaper, I look for chewing gum. If it's compound, I look for the fact that the, the shine is just not coming up to the top of the surface the way it should. Now what I've been doing with this pad, putting some around the edge too. Now for my motorcycles, when I do my own personal stuff or if I do it for a friend that uh, we really want it to be perfect, the cost of the pad is almost negligible. There's two of them in a pack and I think they're under five bucks. So for two bucks, you can be a big spender and you don't wind up using old compound and grinding. And all it has to happen, by the way, if you've never seen it happen, is there'll be one little hard spot on it. One little, I'll call it a stone for lack of a better word. And what happens when that stone starts going around like that? And you, you can then have yourself an extra hour of sanding for nothing. So I always want to do, and let me get a, a microfiber here. I always want to do a real-time test and see if the paint is going to come up in real time. Not a fake thing with camera cuts and, oh, look, it's beautiful in 30 seconds. If it's like this, I try to support it. I have extra towels on the bench so it's nice and soft. Make sure there's no uh, anything that's going to put a scratch in it now. I really want this. From this point on, I've, I've got to treat it like, uh, you know, it's very delicate, that's for sure. Now, the system of having that 
the five star clear, and we'll use that on Luciano's job too. Um, and if he brings the if he brings me the parts in white, and I can go right into doing the ladders, we can do it in probably in less than a week. That'll be really nice. That'll be like a. Uh, well, it's not like we're. It's not like. Not like we're going out riding this afternoon or anything. 28 degrees. We're not going riding. But anyway, if you get this, what has to happen, and in, in my case, what used to happen, when I would see somebody in the 60s, they had all these tricks for buffing out paint, and they had basically DuPont red compound and DuPont white compound. It was a nightmare. This material, I always think, well, how lucky, oops, there, as he walks into the camera, how lucky people are that they don't know what, you don't, you didn't miss a thing, believe me. But that's how much it takes. Once you've got the 2,500 grit sanding done, now it's just a question of picking one part. I like to do a part about that size. Make sure it's perfect. Move on to the next piece. Move on to the next piece. Move on to the next piece. Rather than try to do it like you're, like you're buffing out a Greyhound bus. Now, it doesn't take long and you start to see, that's the nice thing about buffing anything out, you see results right away. Now, in these areas here, uh, this is, you can get it a certain amount done with the buffer, but there's always the parts you have to do by hand. And doing them by hand, if you skimp on that, it's a shame because you really do see these, all these edges and angles reflect light, especially when you're outside. Now. I've, I've kind of segmented this off in the top, and now i got to start segmenting off the, the yellow, and then the last thing, the white. And there's a couple of things that are real handy. Your fingers are real handy. This is a clean microfiber, and this is what I'm suggesting. And a lot of times when I've been to a car show, I look, and all the big flat areas are done beautifully, and then all the stuff you would normally do by hand... They kind of skimp on. Well, I don't want to be accused of that. And because I'm so used to buffing out model airplanes by hand, I just I realize a lot of this you have to do by hand. These little angles and edges, the corners, if you want it to be perfect, uh, it just, it's it's just a question of you have to pay the price. And by the way, on the airplane channel, not that anybody is going to. Uh, this is information you can use, but. <laughs> The buffing out acrylic lacquer or Brodac dope or any of that, you you basically do most of it by hand. Now, I have never used this material on Brodac dope. So I'm real happy to, uh, if somebody passes on the information to me on, uh, on YouTube or whatever, that they're doing one of these jobs, I'd love to know about it. Because, boy, back in the day, when we all used to fight to have the shiniest model airplane, well, win, winning a motorcycle show is is a lot more e a lot easier than winning a model plane concourse award. That's for sure. Now getting inside there. Is going to be that's something I have to do by hand, or I can use the stick, the paint stick wrapped with a microfiber. But every little spot on here, there's a there's a a relatively easy way to do it. Now, one of the very useful I've shown this before, but it's very very useful, is our just a relatively clean microfiber, and I wrap it around just. An ordinary paint stick that uh, you can get anywhere. It doesn't have to be a paint stick. It can be any anything because it's it's nice. Now see with that amount of microfibers. Now I've got a stick. I got to put a little bit of that CR on here, and I can work into this area here a lot more conveniently than using my thumb. This really does make this a whole lot easier. It's just something that makes it easier. And instead of trying to get the buffer down into these corners and you run the risk it's going to chip the paint or put a scratch in it, this is about as easy as it gets. 
It's super useful, and when you're done, you just take the microfiber off and put it in the laundry. Of course, always wash the microfiber separately. Don't put them in with your underwear. <laughs> You'll be sorry. <laughs> no, you always wash microfiber separately. That's a, a for sure. And I went on, a, a, I don't know, last week or whenever, I was talking about and washing microfibers. There are some good quality ones. The ones at Harbor Freight are not. And the ones at Kirkland seem to be uh, the preferred ones for me. And uh, once again, I'll thank Dale for contributing a, uh, a bunch of them, I guess, last time we worked on a part for him. We did his RZ tank. And it's all on old videos. If you're bored, look it up. The life we've had. Anyway, this is going to buff out real nice. Let me get another microfiber. Of course, it's there's there's ninety percent of it you can do with the buffer, ten percent by hand is probably the legitimate ratio. And to always avoid these edges, or you'll be sorry. Now, in this case, that the absolute bottom of that valley. See what's happened is this is too thick. It's too big of a radius to go in there. So I'm going to take the microfiber off. And where I have the polish, I can this I always say, get your thumb or your forefinger or something that's the right diameter down in there. Because this is one of the little details that if you don't do it, you think nobody's going to see it. And and it really shows in the final product. It really does. Okay, so there we go. Just wipe this down. And that should be good. That should be really good to go. Anyway, now we still have some parts of this to do. We got to do this. One, two, three, four more sections. But then having, having this part done and in the bank will be a real, a real watershed for this project. And little by little that oh I love that that's coming out so nice the whites coming out I got this last little spot to do and probably divide it in half I don't even have to divide it in half it's not that big boy if you only could see these parts in real life the combination of the Yama yellow which I just think really hit hit the nail right on the head for this bike anyway now Luciano wants to do his cafe racer with ladders he's going to uh, again he'll design it up come up with some idea. I'm already looking online every day for some ideas. I And when I look online, the idea is to see things that I like, things that I really don't like, and then try to combine all of the features of stuff that I really like. And it's very funny, from these two concept sketches, this bike has already come into its own. We're right at the end of buffing. This will be done in an hour. But the thing that's really cool about it, I'm already thinking about the next project. And of course things change, but you've got to start somewhere. Now one thing I thought I'd mention, I don't, I don't want to forget to mention is, at the very end of buffing this, well, all the while I'm buffing it, you really shouldn't be doing this, pressing, pressing down. The test is if the motor slows down, you're pressing too hard. It, it really shouldn't be that the motor, is, it's like a Dremel tool. The compound should do the cutting, not the force of pushing it down. So what I always suggest is just very light pressure and change the direction constantly. Don't sit there and hold it in one spot. But, but the idea is there's an amount and it takes a little practice to get the feel not to press it down and lean on it. All you'll do is wear the buffer out or burn the paint or put scratch marks in it. Light pressure, as soon as you hear the motor starting to slow down, that's a little bit too much. And if you see you're not cutting the paint, you know you're not pressing down enough. So it's a balancing act. Now a really, a hard lesson that I learned the hard way, once you get this finished that you're really happy with it, and now maintaining it is a critical, critical thing. Because otherwise, if you just if you just ignore this and start washing your bike at the car wash, it doesn't even pay to do this. 
but maintaining this. Here's one of the tricks that I found. Always clean the microfibers. Don't, here's the thing. We use the microfiber today to wipe up the polish. This will go in the laundry now. That's why you need a, a bunch of them. Take another a relatively clean one or one that's just been out of the laundry to get the final wax, residue, polish, whatever's off. Now, you would think, well, that's not that important. I'm just going to put Simonize on it and wipe it down with a towel. If you'd use the microfibers and they're perfectly clean and then put them right in the laundry, you'll find out, wow, that the shine stays that way even longer. Now, one thing I want to try before the before this session ends, so I've got a little time. I didn't expect to have this go as quickly as it did. Let me do it this way. I want to do a little test of because I have to flitz this and I have to paint the back. I'm not going to have time to paint the back today. That's a little bit too long. But I do want to, I have the pad with the flitz from yesterday and it's still wet. But I thought, well, let me give this a try with the big buffer with a brand new black pad. The black being the softest pad. Because I want to do it anyway. And this way I'll have the black pad on the big buffer, the new pad. And I'll, I'll be ready to, to buff the other parts. And the flitz is not a really a buffing compound the biggest advantage is it puts a layer of protection so hopefully hopefully for six months or more so just some basic information that may, may be helpful they make these pads these are the sponge pads that go on the bigger a bigger harbor freight i don't know how the, this was about 60 bucks i think years ago but they make the big six inch foam but the foam comes three different ways the the kind of yellowy orange one is for cutting with cutting compound. Number two is for polishing with pre-waxes and cleaners. And the black one is the softest. This is for liquid waxes and see the word finishing. Well, this is the one I'm going to want to use because I've already got the part polished and buffed and everything. So what I'm going to try, I'm going to take this brand new pad. And this is what I always like to do, by the way. I, I just become a big believer in that these pads, when you try to use the old ones up and they scratch everything up, and I'm going to write on here. So the idea of having that, I don't want to contaminate that pad. That's the problem. Now when I take this one off, this one has wax, usually cleaner wax, whatever it has. Oh, here you go. This one is for 8065. So this is one I was using the polish on. I'll leave that with the polish. I'll use this one with the flitz. And I want to try to do, it's for the protection more than the polishing. The nice thing about this, it's got a speed control. I like to use speed three for whatever that's worth. But the whole objective is there is, and, and I see it's constantly improving in the world of paint. This used to be such an ordeal to buff out paint. In the day, and I go back, the days of acrylic lacquer in the 60s and 70s, it was a nightmare. And, and you didn't have all this choice of products. Now, with these, this is really for a car. And what I'm going to do probably in the spring is flitz the whole car down. So I'll have a brand new pad with flitz. I'll have a brand new pad with 8065. And I go to my, tr my trusty laundry basket. And you can see I've got a pad for each kind of polish that I use. The, the, these are the rougher pads for grinding. The medium pads are the blue ones, and the black are the fine. Also, uh, these are the ones I've been using lately. They've been used. I'm not sure I'm going to use them for anything but polishing aluminum. As you see, I've got a bunch of these. Now, the reason for this is each one of these pads has a different purpose. And as an example, here's one that goes very, very soft material. I've used it on a drill. This one is good for a car. You sure I wouldn't even consider using this on a motorcycle part. It's it's too big and when it's going fast, it just it's just too too aggressive. And then I got all the little polishing wheels and pads for doing little detailing. But there's a couple. This one is really good. These are Harbor Freight ones and how soft they are. This can buff corners and edges in an electric drill at a slow speed. There's and of course the king of the hill, if you don't have one of these, this is the flitz ball. And I know McGuire's makes something very similar, but this, you only use this with, I only use it with flitz polish. That is really good. So having all this equipment, but if you don't have a formula for success, it's like, it's like owning a bunch of guns, but you don't have any bullets.
or owning the bullets and you don't have any guns. And I have had really, really exceptionally good luck with flits. And I've made several videos that are on my channel about using this for polishing metal. It really works great on aluminum. Absolutely super on aluminum. It's good on paint, but then thing it does, and I'm, I'm at the end of doing my test, and I've said this before, at the beginning of last year, I flitzed down the motorcycles by hand, and then I, found, I wanted to find out if any of these parts were going to deteriorate over the winter. And I didn't see any deterioration at all. They, the normal stuff that I would have to grind away at just wiped right off. So I, I have a good feeling because it's made for boats too where they use, uh, where it's in salt water. Now I'm very carefully doing this. I really don't have to be this careful, but because I wanted to test this. And I'll do this part. I'm not going to have time to paint the the back. I wanted to do that today, but just we're running out of time here, and of course the baby is getting ready to come over. So, and it would help. I found out it helps if you plug it in. That's always one of the <laughs> one of the key good things here. We have plenty of outlets. So let me just see if this is going to do what I want it to do. See, the whole idea is <clears throat> I'm not buffing away like you would normally do to remove material. In fact, this is on purpose a clean microfiber. I don't want to remove material. I want this the same way you would use carnauba wax to protect something. Yeah, it may make it a little shinier, but it's the protection you're after. Now, and I, there's always a test uh, to find out. Yeah, you can feel it always feels a little shinier. Maybe it's just me. But anyway, it's that same thing. I'll give this whole part off camera a, a coating of flitz, and that's probably going to be all I'm going to get done today. There's our final part. And that really is, I think, if you follow through all the steps that I've put on the video for this project in particular, and you have that finish on your bike come springtime, or your restoration, or your guitar, or your bathtub, or whatever you're restoring, I think you should be pretty happy. That really is, that is really, really nice. If you could only see this in real life, I think you'd be really impressed. Maybe you're impressed looking at it on a video. If you can see this in real life, I think, again, I really think this came out great. Actually, I think the whole bike came out great. And luckily, we have the whole thing on video. This is, I think, episode uh, 101. We don't know how many are left. But you can see that if you look at that, wow. Hard not to like that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and hey, thanks for watching.